This is Scott the Fix It Guy. Today we're dealing with a Bertazzoni oven that won't light, and if it does light, the it seems the flame goes out pretty pretty fast. It won't stay lit. So we're going to be replacing the thermal coupler, which is pretty easy to do. A little bit of disassembly, but it's not that hard. First, we're taking the new thermal coupler that comes um, you know all coiled up, and we're just going to uncoil it and straighten that out before we do the installation. So we're just getting it all uncoiled, totally straight. We'll get that off to the side. We're going to remove everything from the top of the stove. So the, taking the grates off and all of the burner heads. And on this oven, they just come right off. There's no fasteners. Just lift them right off. Really easy. And then we're going to remove the um, drip pan, the silver drip pan that's on the top from the burner heads. And to do that, um, each one of the burners has a couple of screws that hold it on, and they're just uh, Torx 15 screws, so we're gonna zip those off. They're really short, and I'm gonna put each screw into on top of the burner head that I removed it from, just so I can keep track of them, because the um, large left one in the front, the screws are slightly different size. We don't want to get them mixed up. So I just turn the burner heads upside down and I put the screws per burner head into that um, upside down burner head just to help keep track of it. So once we get all the screws out, we can um, do a little bit of disassembly down in the oven compartment. So we're going to open the oven door. We're going to take the grates out, just slide those out. And then we want to remove the bottom panel because that's where the thermal coupler lives. And the bottom panel just comes out with two Phillips head screws that are right in the front. We're just going to zip those out, front left and front right. And then you want to lift up on the plate, mainly lift up on the back by about two inches. And then you can slide the plate back away from you by about, a, about an inch, then you can just lift it and just pull it right up. Lift it up, pull it out, and then we have access to the thermal coupler. We're going to take a standard head screwdriver and we're going to pry out carefully a little clip that holds it to its mount. So we get that clip out. There's the clip. And then we're just going to take that thermal coupler, the old one, and we're going to pull it out of its mounting. Just pull straight out. And we're going to kind of push it through the firewall. So it's got a long uh, cable connecting it. We're going to push that cable through the firewall toward the back of the oven. And now we want to pull the whole oven out away from the wall. And these aren't, ovens aren't very heavy, so it won't be too hard. Sometimes you can put a little Windex underneath the feet to make it slippery, and it's easier to, easier to get out if you're having any trouble. So we're going to pull that all the way out. Take your time. Make sure the gas line is long enough to let you pull it out. If it's not, you might want to climb back there and shut down the gas, and then you can uh, remove the gas line. So in this one, it is long enough, so I did unplug it, though. I unplugged the oven, and I'm going to remove some screws now on the back. So there's two screws on the right-hand side on the back, and there's two screws on the top that I want to remove, too. I don't have to remove the whole plate. I want to remove these two screws also. These are holding, holding on the top panel, the drip pan. Two screws on the right and two on the left. I gotta remove those. And then I can lift that drip pan off. And that's important because the um, thermal coupler is connected to the oven valve underneath this drip pan. So I'm gonna lift it up from the back and then let it slide forward slightly. I'll just get that out of the way. It's a good opportunity to clean it because you get it all off. And I'm going to use my dikes to cut a wire tie that's holding 
the cable on the thermocoupler. And then I'll remove this one last screw here from the uh, back panel so I get a little bit better access to the routing of the thermocoupler. Pull the panel back slightly. And here I'm pulling the thermocoupler out of the firewall. That was the part we disconnected at the oven. Take my dikes and cut this little zip tie also. So I can I can route this old thermocoupler out. I'm going to take uh, some pliers and just loosen up where it's connected to the oven valve. Then I use my fingers to spin it off. It's best to use a five sixteenths wrench. Open end wrench would be perfect, but I didn't have one, so I just used some pliers to loosen it. So I'm pulling out the old thermocoupler now, getting that out of the way. And I think this thing was malfunctioning because the end of it, the bulb, was just loose. When I looked at it, it looked like it just had kind of broken away. And it wasn't sending a good signal. So the uh, safety valve kept shutting off the, the gas, which would shut off the flame. So I'm routing in the new thermocoupler. This is the skinny end. And this end goes onto the oven valve. I'm going to push it into the oven valve and then I'll just I'll just use uh, my fingers to tighten it and then once I can't tighten it anymore I'll use my wrench to tighten it a few more turns you do want to get that pretty tight careful not to strip the thread so not monst monstrously tight so now we have the pliers to get it tight again a 5 16th wrench would be even better so now we're just going to put the end of the therm new thermocoupler into the firewall. I'm going to reach in now. I'm inside the oven. I'm going to grab that end and pull it in. I'm going to use actually a pair of pliers so I can pull it through the firewall. It's kind of stuck. There we go. And then I'll just Put a zip tie back on here to hold these wires together. Just putting it back where it was originally. And I'll add another zip tie over these wires in the back, just like it was originally. Just kind of holds them all together. Get all the uh, insulation back into position. Here we go. I'm going to put the drip pan back on. So I put on the uh, front of it first at about 45 degrees, and then I set down the back of it slow and carefully because you want those igniters, those porcelain igniters to poke up through the hole. Take your time. And I'm just pushing it down in the back and I'm going to grab this burner head and just pull it toward me a little bit so that it won't be in the way of the drip pan seating down. I'll do the same here on the right. I'll pull the burner toward me and then push down on the drip pan so it sits flat. And then just got to put all the screws back in. Those are really short ones and I put the screws in uh, to the back to the back of the uh, burner cap so I could know which one goes where and I'm just going to add those back in with my Torx 15 wrench and then once I get that done I'll put the burner caps back on I gotta do that for all the all the different burners And when I put in the uh, thermocoupler, I did put the clip back in, too, to hold that new thermocoupler in position. I'm just putting the screws back in uh, on the back. So on the parts that hold in the drip pan, on the upper left and upper right, has each has two screws to put those back in. And then the back plate has two screws on the top and two screws on the right. 
that you have to put back in. We'll get that one, one zipped in, and then we can uh, just play away with these last two for the drip pan. Plug it back in, and we are going to push the oven back into position. Remember, if you had to remove the gas line, make sure you got it on tight. There's no leak. Turn the gas back on. We're going to push this all the way up against the wall again. And here we are putting that thermal coupler into its bracket. We're pulling, we're pulling a little more cable through. And then we're going to put it into the bracket and then add that clip to hold it. Just take your time. And once you get this done, your oven's going to work great again. When the thermal coupler is not making a good connection, it'll just keep cutting out the safety valve and you'll keep losing your heat, losing your flame. The new thermal coupler, it'll, it'll work really good. This is also true with heaters, like wall heaters. You gotta sometimes change the thermal coupler. So now we're gonna give it a little test. Push in there, see if we get ignition. There we go. We have a nice blue flame back to normal. So thanks so much for watching and please subscribe when you get a chance. Thank you.